You're from California and you were drafted by the Dodgers in 2014. Was that a dream come true for you to be drafted by your favorite team? I was just like stoked just to be drafted at all. And then having to be your hometown team was even better. I think coming up through the minors, it was even more rewarding too, because their high affiliate is in Rancho Cucamonga. So that's 25 minutes from my house, which was awesome. Like just being able to have family come out and watch some of the games. So definitely a dream come true being drafted by the hometown team. Was baseball always your first sport to play growing up as a kid in California? Did you play any other sports or did you know baseball was going to be the one that you pursued the most? My parents stuck me in a bunch of different sports. I played water polo. I played volleyball. I swam. But baseball was the sport that I liked the most, but I wasn't always the best at it. So I was kind of like trying different things. And in high school, I played a lot of volleyball. I loved it. I actually tried to play in college before I tried to play baseball in college. It didn't work out and baseball ended up being okay. The other day, Fernando Tatis Jr. swung at a 3-0 pitch, hit a grand slam when the Padres were up like 7-0 or something. So can I just get your thoughts on what Tatis did swinging 3-0 since you are a pitcher, like if somebody did that to you, and how do you feel about the Padres manager not going out there and defending his player? I've played with a lot of veterans in the Dodgers organization, so I do see the side that they're talking about, but I think just the way the game is going and the way it's trending, I don't think there's anything wrong with him swinging 3-0. If I got bases loaded in a, a situation where a guy's swinging 3-0, that gives me a chance to get a double play. So I don't necessarily like fault him for that. It just, it sucks that it was a grand slam. Now all those runs scored (laughs) off of you, but that's just the way it goes sometimes in baseball. I don't like the next time somebody threw at the next guy. I don't like that. But I was talking to some teammates about it and they said the Padres manager came from the Rangers organization previously. And so that I think plays into some stuff. Like obviously you want to respect the other team and what's going on, but Tatis just, he's a great player. You got to let him do his thing and he's showing right now how great he is and how great he can be you were with the Dodgers organization for a little bit then uh you with the Royals had a cup of coffee in the majors in 2018 now since November 2019 you've been with the Giants and you spoke of playing with a lot of veterans in the Dodgers organizations any veterans that really gave you some good pointers or helped you along in your journey here yeah do you remember Justin Masterson he's one of my favorite teammates of all time he took me under his wing in 17 he was a sinker guy but just on a personal standpoint that guy changed my life such a great teammate in person can't say good enough things about him but just like other guys trace thompson comes to mind a lot of those dodger guys that are on the team right now you know austin barnes i've played with him a lot came up with cody bellinger so i don't know they got a good little organization going on right now they've kind of like timed it perfectly with all the guys coming up all at the same time trevor how have you and your family been dealing with uh the global pandemic and, and everything going on since the stoppage of sports and now the transition of sports coming back it's just like such a weird time for everybody. I think the most frustrating thing is just not being able to go outside and just live life normally. You got to wear a mask everywhere you go and you want to be sensitive to other people. But at the same time, maybe it's not as big of a deal for your family because we're all pretty healthy. So it's just a really weird line to walk. I don't know how else to describe it, but we've been trying to do the best we can, just doing puzzles, playing games inside. Specifically right now with the alternate site, it's getting pretty tough like in the hotel. We've been watching a lot of Netflix and HBO and you just do whatever you can. I'm a big movie guy. What's your favorite baseball movie? Sandlot. Gotta be Sandlot. Sandlot, okay. <laughs> that brings me to another point. So in Sandlot is inspired by Babe Ruth. Last week we had a conversation where some of our members, uh, Greg Polius in particular, said Babe Ruth is oh, overrated. Man. What would you say to that question saying that Babe Ruth is overrated? Do you believe Trevor, that? Trevor, before you answer that, TK threw you an alley hoop and you just dunked it. He threw oh, you a no. nice little alley and he just kind of warped you into our sports hit list discussions. I'm just giving you a fair warning. This is what's been going okay, on. Okay, okay. In Babe Ruth, time in the way baseball was he was not overrated but I think as baseball has carried on the game has kind of changed and so I don't know I'll leave that up to you I don't <laughs> want to say a definitive now? statement so he I, leaves I the window open this. Okay. <laughs> so, right, Trevor, so Trevor, you're coming off an injury, a uh, labrum hip injury. How was it rehabbing and, and being able to get yourself back on the field? How tough was that? For you? Dude, rehabbing sucks. Like you're just in Arizona the whole time or Florida. Uh, for me, it was like the whole season. So I was dying to get back on the field and just coming off of a hip injury. I was on crutches for 12 weeks. It was just like a really painful recovery. But now that I'm on the other side, I feel great. I've learned a lot about my body and how to like prepare for games and starts and stuff. 
So it's, it's been great. Like the Giants have done a really good job, like taking care of us and making sure that uh, we're staying on top of our recovery. Since TK opened the door to hitless questions, let me continue with that. What are your thoughts on the Houston Astros and their sign stealing scandal? I'm going to preface everything I say with this. I didn't play during that season, so I'm not the guy who should be talking about it. But if there was some funny business going on, if there was cheating, which I do think there was, that's not right. And I can totally understand why the players are frustrated by that. And I think at the end of the day, we just got to come to a place where like the players can come together and say like, look, let's make sure this doesn't happen. We need to keep the integrity of our game solid and and just like deal with it and move on. I don't know if the players feel like there was enough justice. That's understandable. But eventually I'm hoping after this season, we call move forward and just get back to playing baseball again. I saw that, uh, I believe, two years ago, you got traded to the Kansas City Royals. Can you just, like, walk us through what it's like to be traded? We could sit here and watch TV all day and and hear quotes and everything, but can you take us through, like, the actual experience of, like, what goes on? Yeah, so I was at, like, a rookie career development thing that they have. For us, it was in Washington, D.C. that year, and so we were, like, at dinner listening to speeches by people from the Players Association. And I remember getting a phone call from Farhan while I'm at dinner. So like I had to like step out of the room because I know usually when your GM's calling you, it's kind of a big deal. He tells me like, hey, you just got traded to the Royals. And after that point, it was just kind of a blur. So the whole experience, like going from one team to another was tough because you got to meet brand new coaches, teammates, kind of get comfortable. And then there's like an expectation for you. There's a reason why they traded for you. So they want to see you perform. And for me, like I was playing hurt that year. So I was like pretty disappointed with the impression that I gave the Royals. And, you know, I have nothing but great things to say about that organization. And I just wish that I could have like contributed more to, to them as a team, you know? So how is it now playing home with the Giants? How is it playing for, under them and, and how is it going so far? It's been great. So Farhan and Gabe Kapler were with the Dodgers organization when I was coming up through the system. And so um, it's it feels like pretty similar um, as far as like how they communicate and how they want to develop their players. So for me, like you can't really be loyal to any team. Like as a fan, you're just trying to contribute any way you can. And, you know, I'm hoping that I get that opportunity. And I, I think it's, you know, we have a good opportunity right now with the Giants and hopefully it'll happen this season. Just going back a little bit with uh, Kansas City in 2018, my favorite baseball movie, Bull Durham, was all about getting to this show. Uh, you played, you were in uh, statistically four games with the Royals in 2018, but just overall, what was the experience like uh, being in the majors, like a childhood's dream come true? Yeah, it was sweet. Like just... I remember before the game, like, so my, my, my debut was a start, which is kind of special uh, because like, you know, it's going to happen. You kind of get to go through uh, start to finish, like watching everybody get ready in the locker room. And um, everybody tells you like, Hey, make sure you go out to the dugout like 10 minutes before you need to get ready so that you can kind of like take it all in. So I tried to do that. Um, Kansas city is a beautiful ballpark. They got the fountains in the background. Um, I was really lucky, like I had enough notice to get my family out there. So, um, you know, getting to see my mom, like come and watch me warm up in the bullpen was kind of cool. Um, my college coaches ended up coming out. So like they waved and said hi. And so you get all this like nervousness and then anticipation, you finally get up on the mound and it just feels like everything kind of like stands still for a little bit. And, um, I don't know. It was, it was special. I just wish like the result would have been a little better, but um, you know, that it's indescribable. I mean, it's like you finally are accomplishing what you want to do, but at the same time, like you have to do what you need to do to stay there. So um, I don't know, just a, a different perspective on it, I guess. Cool. Very cool. At any point in your career or, or your come up and to get to the majors, did you want to give up? Was there any uh, doubt in your mind that, you know what, maybe this may not be for me, maybe it's too hard to make it or, or um, what kept you going? Yeah, my first season, I was um, in Ogden, Utah, and I just had a really rough time. Like I came from a pretty small division two school at the time. And um, so a lot of my teammates had like known each other by playing against each other. And um, I don't know, I just didn't really like, make that great of friends at first and so 
I was struggling to kind of figure out like um, the pioneer league, I think is a very difficult league to pitch in. Like the ball flies really well. And so I, I mean, I wasn't pitching well to begin with. And then you add that into the mix and then not having friends. So um, I had a really tough time that season. And I remember coming home and I, I connected with my trainer um, Bates, Chris Bates at the time. And, and he just kind of like reset me for that off season and, and really motivated me again. Um, I think I was too focused on like performing for other people and not for myself. Um, I was more worried about like, what would people think of me after having a rough season? And um, he just said like, look, you got to do this for you and for God and for your family. This isn't for other people, you know? Um, so that, that really stuck with me and I think helped me out a lot that off season. So I was able to continue forward. TK yeah. final question. Uh, you just brought up the baseballs and you've been pitching since 2014 in and around the minor leagues and the majors. Uh, last year, 6,776 home runs hit in a season. Uh, does the ball feel any different to you when you throw it? Or TK steal it? I was going to go in there, TK. You yeah, right. no? That's another problem in the sports hit list is about juice baseball. Thank you for asking that TK. Uh, there's a difference. Yeah, there's a difference in the ball. I I wouldn't say like uh, it's it's tough. OK, so in 2019, that was the year I sat out. But that was like the biggest difference that everybody noticed. I remember sitting in the training room, like watching my teammates line scores and like one of the pitchers was an all star with like a five and a half ERA like I couldn't believe how much the PCL had changed um, since they switched over to the big league ball. But I think there was an even bigger difference in the big league balls too. So um, personally, you can't feel a difference, but you can tell a difference when it comes off the bat for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we've seen some home runs hit the guys, you know, just golfing it, just kind of swinging the bat out there and just, just flies. So you know, yeah, it, it makes gotta it raise tough. the mound a couple inches to even this out. You know, like the sixties. <laughs> Chuck, final question for Trevor. Uh, yeah, um, there are talks that minor league baseball could be like gone pretty much. Uh, that uh, 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 the MLB is basically trying to to lessen teams in minor leagues. Can I just get your thoughts on the whole aspect of of, of minor league baseball and how it's helped your career? And if you think there is a future of minor league baseball in the sport of major league baseball yeah no doubt the game is going to change from this point on like minors and major league like i'm super i'll be very disappointed if you know minor league baseball is kind of a shell of what it used to be like in my opinion you've got to have the minor leagues it's it's one of the best ways to get the fan base to like latch on to players like if you look at how many guys talk about their host families over the course of their careers, like you could find hundreds of stories of, of people like meeting families and they have those lasting connections. Um, and it's, it goes beyond that too. Like the, the bus rides, the, the flights and the PCL, like waking up at 3 AM and um, you know, coming to the hotel and you got to be ready to play that day. Like all those stories, they, they teach you how to like, just dig down and be able to play no matter what. And I think that's that mental toughness that you got to have when you get to the big leagues, you got to find a way to win when things aren't going your way. Um, so I really hope that they can come together and figure out a way to make minor league baseball great again, but we'll see. Travis, final question, um, playing in parks now without fans, is there a major difference for the major leaguers or, or just for you ha not having the fans cheering and, 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 how is that for players getting accustomed to that new social distance era of sports? For me, I'm going to have adrenaline no matter what, because I'm trying to win a job. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think, I think for like the veteran guys, it's probably, I can imagine it would be more difficult just because, you know, they are used to playing in higher leverage situations. And, um, you know, you can see it in spring training. They're, the younger guys like have more adrenaline and, uh, the older guys, like it'll take them a little while to get going. Um, so I think not having the fans definitely plays into the game a lot. Um, and it's disappointing. Like, 
I don't know, you, you just kind of feed off the crowd's energy and it's a lot more fun when you got fans there. So hopefully we can get that happening.